strings. And then what same what you do in ban and picks, you try and eliminate those strings from the opposing team. So we start off, you know, LeBlanc ban, they don't want Febivan rolling, they don't want him snowballing and roaming the map. No, definitely not. Febivan, of course, has done very well this year on the likes of Zerath, on the likes of Cassadin. And Febivan, actually, you know, much like Fox from SK Gaming, he's delivered, he's been consistent, but he's always had the support of the rest of his team. For Fnatic, it feels like it's a very team uh, emphasis style, not necessarily solo carries. There's that Cassidy taken off the table. No real surprises yet, Crepo. Yeah, but I, I've been through these ban and pick phases a lot, you know, in my career as a pro player, but it's always, right now, I don't know, like, what do you target against Fnatic, you know? I, I, in my mind, it's get rid of the Annie uh, of Yellowstar and then maybe shut down another role, but it seems like they're gonna leave the Rengar open. They already targeted Febivan twice, so they're, they're, they're gonna lie in Sorn out playing Febivan, snowballing somehow. Um, not quite sure if that's going to work. You have to question about the Rengar ban. Rengar has been so pivotal for Rainover, along with the likes of Rumble, Lissandra. These are all very high priority picks. Is this leaning towards an Ari first pick for Copenhagen Wolves? Because they're banning out. Cassin's already out. You know, LeBlanc's already out. Zeref's already out. Now they're banning a lost champion. You know, Zed's already out. I feel Fnatic might be forced to just ban an Ari here or uh, give it to Soren or have something ready up their sleeve that works well again, because Ari is definitely a tier one pick here. Uh, at the same time, Fnatic still gets there with Sandra if they give away Ari, so it's going to be tricky. You know, you have to take like five, four steps ahead instead of just looking at the first two rotations of picks because it has to come together. I do like the Kalista ban. I think it's smart. Um, basically, worst case, if Freeze goes for these hard carry uh, champions, then at least he's on Draven and he's not as mobile as a Kalista. So, Ari taken off the table. Yeah. You've mentioned the Draven. We'll see what Freeze decides to default to. Uh, a lot of priority champions. Jarvan is up. Nah is up. Which Young Luck has Sandra, played a few really. teams. Yeah, Lissandra Fahuni, it has been one of his most successful champions this year. Problem with a pick like Rengar as well is like, yeah, you can take it away, but then you're stuck playing Rengar. <laughs> In the West, that's not always been the <laughs> brightest idea, you know. So unless your name's Rainover, you know, that champion kind of belongs to you. So you can leave it open as well. They have no fear of playing into a Rengar because they know the champion the best out of pretty much everybody in the West, I would almost reckon. So it's pretty much a free pick for Fnatic if they want it. Yeah, we do see that Zereth is off the table, which has been comboed with that Rengar a few times for Rainover and Febivin. And it really feels like both of these teams have been somewhat caught off guard. There is the Lissandra I mean, pick smart. that you were expecting, Crepo. Well, how do Fnatic reply? We've seen the hover. You know, this is something that we've seen them do time and time again and make work. Yeah, but definitely leaves uh, Jungle Nidalee open as well, so maybe uh, but they, taking away the, the Nidalee from the jungle because they seem to be hovering over Rengar. And now they're doubting, they're like, hey guys, we're picking two jungle champions, hang on, hang on. So for a team like Fnatic, you're coming into this game, you assume that they are the favorites by a fairly long margin. Copenhagen Wolves have shown that they can scrap, that they can fight, they can draw games out. For Fnatic, do you think they are afraid of a Sorin or a young buck Lissandra considering they've lost it? You know, you were touching on, hey, with all these mid lane bangs, Copenhagen was looking to just outplay 1v1 in that mid lane. Yeah, I think definitely the value of Lissandra goes up even more now that a lot of the mid laners are out. Because she, because she is, after all, a flex pick. We see her a lot in the top lane, but that doesn't mean she can't be playing mid. You know, remember how well uh, Froggen did with her in the Rengar combo. So if they get a CC jungle in addition to the Lissandra mid, that they can definitely shut down this one lane. You know, not only did they force Febivin in uncomfortable picks, or maybe less comfortable, maybe not necessarily uncomfortable, but they have the double CC to shut him down. And they're hovering now right here, just indicating that this is indeed a Lissandra mid. Yeah, and it is, of course, potentially the fourth time for Young Buck. Corky has been locked in for Steelback, the janitor on the back lane from Fnatic, as you're calling him. <laughs> I'm, gonna, to I'm gonna use that because I think it's beautiful. Uh, Fnatic, a lot of range poke, a lot of siege power in their two picks already. I don't like this hover though, you know, you should take a note from Cloud9. Don't pick your champions, don't hover about it. If you want to think about them, think about it. You have your headsets, you know, you don't have to show the enemy, hey guys, we're thinking about it for 45 seconds long. You know, what if what if they pick Gnar? It's, it's, a, waste, it's a waste of information, you shouldn't do it. Look at Fnatic, yeah, they already have signature Fnatic style. You know, they have the, the, the Huni equalizers coming up, and then you have signature champion for steel by Corky. It really fits his playstyle because Corky is an AD carry that allows your support to roam. You're like, yeah, go ahead, man, just go on. I, I have my Phosphorus Bomb, I have my Rockets, I can get at least 60% of the wave on my own without getting any pressure on myself and I can get about 80% of the wave even 1v2 and it looks like Copenhagen Wolves isn't really picking for themselves but stealing away from Fnatic more and more and more. Yeah there was that Annie pick you touched on during the ban phase putting Yellowstar on something just a little more uncomfortable. I do however feel his Janna has been good. It has been the disengage that Fnatic has looked for. He's also undefeated on that champion but for Copenhagen Wolves a lot of engage 
the go switch is definitely there for them. Yeah, Fnatic's getting into a very complex composition, you know. As we saw with Alliance as well, if you don't have any targeted hard CC, your composition becomes harder and harder to play. Sure, Fnatic's a great team, they can pull it off. But having a Janna in there, you know, the a Rumble, the Equalize, yeah, it could slow some people, but it really locked them down. You know, Corky, if they end up going for this this Ezreal mid, they're almost playing a pure poke comp, and it's dangerous to play that into a hard engage with Sandra Jarvan and a Wombo combo. Well, last second swap, it's not a point-and-click CC, but Rainover has missed maybe none of his bowler strikes. So we're gonna have that combo. The real question for me, what does Febivin feel comfortable playing in the mid lane to round out this team composition? We will see that shortly. Soren's Cassiopeia has also won the Copenhagen Wolves games in the past. Uh, I really I really like this, and this 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 might still be young, but Cassiopeia, remember, you, you never know. Touche. But uh, I really like the Grace pick, because I think they need something with a little more mobility, uh, ranged like Burst, uh, Spellcaster AD, because if they get Draven, I feel Copenhagen Wolves has a tendency to pick these really nice group comps, but then the enemies, if they're smart, they will just run rings around them and never let them fight, you know? And that's the pitfall they could fall into. So hopefully, this Grace is a little better pick than a Draven. Annie Graves, you've got to be potent lane, level six, you know, plays out itself, you know, all in Tibbers burst. So that could definitely work. Um, I like, actually, that they force Janna on the yellow star. He, he's a king of support, you know, and he can disengage really well, but there is literally no engage unless you win to sec somebody with the Janna Q flash uh, ultimate, but that's style points, you know, that's almost forgiving greed level of uh, styling on them. The wind sec. Exactly. I think that's the first time I've heard that one, and we'll most likely be hearing it I again. I one, man. Oriana out again. I think there's a lot of inherent synergy between that invisible cat shockwave. Fnatic with a fairly standard uh, team fight comp, really. Oriana plus Rumble and a lot of pressure if they can get that down. They might run out of 80 damage, though. I mean, Corky is a very big part of Corky's kit, is magic damage, you know. Rumble and Oriana, double AP, you know. Eventually, Rainover is not going to be dealing that much damage because he has to be the tanky frontline at the same time. On the other side, who's going to itemize pure MR? Only really Jarvan uh, on the side of Copenhagen Wolves, so it's okay to play double AP into double AP. But um, I think Fnatic has a really complex uh, type of champions. Like, they have a lot of poke, you know, and they, they, they can force things, but it's really hard for them to lock stuff down. If you look at what Copenhagen Wolves is doing, and I think that's really smart when you're a team that is quote-unquote inferior, make it point and click, you know. That guy, we want him dead. Okay, he's dead. Now what? What's next? Can we get an objective? And let's see if it works. But uh, I'm keeping my eye on Youngbuck. He has to perform. Huni has shown that he uh, he had the Huni show. Yeah, know? no uh, doubt about it. Huni's Lissandra, probably the best in Europe at the moment, but it is in part due to Rainover's presence. It's the duo, it's the fact they work together on that one. I like the fact that you hit the complexity of Fnatic's comp, gives them more options. They have engage if they want it, albeit it's more difficult. It's harder to pull off, yeah. But they also have disengage, they have siege, they've got some strong wave clear. There are the team comps. You guys know what to do. Hashtag CWWin, hashtag FNCWin. We're about to jump into this game. I got 99 problems. But Crepo ain't one. Well, that's definitely not what my ex would say. And we're about to jump in game. It is Copenhagen Wolves versus Fnatic. Crepo, you've talked about the complexities. Let's see how aggressive the Wolves can play as we jump into the second to last game here in week number four. Yeah, let's see what they do. Um, I, don't, I don't think Fnatic is going to do anything too fancy. They literally have zero hard target crowd controls effect. So if any stacks a stun, they can actually get caught and die. So I Im imagine line of scrimmage. And then, yeah, Copenhagen Wolves, they can take two approaches, you know. Either you play a super passive level one, or you go all out with a crazy invade. But I imagine it's passive, you know. Well, for Soren on this Cassiopeia, he's currently undefeated. Copenhagen Wolves, three wins, four losses coming into this game, and we know how that's going to scale. So Makings of a lane swap. It's really interesting how these metagames uh, develop, you know? So right now we have two people hiding at their tier 2 tower in top because they want to dodge the war that can possibly get placed behind them or at any of the tier 1 towers, you know, the traditional let's spot you in the lane swap ward because people are so used to that ward. Nowadays, people have been placing wards in the lane, in the brushes. So there's only one spot you can play, stay at if you want to get stay out of the site completely, and that's run to the tier 2 tower all the way. And it looks like, I think... Um, Unlimited might be faking the lane swap, so he hopes there's a ward there or something and it might show up randomly. I have no idea what the Copenhagen Wolves are doing, but I'm trying to explain it, and this seems like the only like rational explanation here. Well, let's see if they do get that lane swap to go down. Crepo, you've already touched on the power of that Graves' Annie lane. Steelback is just going to be looking to farm himself up, obviously going to have some scaling in his favor, and it looks to be the fact that is he going to base? Is a swapping? We don't know yet. We'll have to figure that out in a moment or two. Huni going to have the support of Yellowstar. We've seen this before as well with Huni on Rumble and Yellowstar on Janna. T 
tag teaming, holding hands in the jungle. I have my eye on the limited right now. I want to figure out what he's doing. So he decides to run to his jungle, run through blind, and go back top. So it does seem that uh, I imagine Copenhagen Wolves thought they could beat the 2v2, want the 2v2 on top, and then fake the lane, predict the lane swap, and then somehow uh, force the fake lane swap by sending unlimited bottom. It seems very complex. I might be entirely wrong here, but it doesn't matter. We have uh, a 2v2 lane on top lane. Might be overthinking it. We'll see how it works out. In the 2v2, Freeze played very aggressively yesterday. That was up against Forgiven and Enrated. Slightly different champion in Graves, but still a lane bully. Still got all that burst and has the opportunity to do similar today. They have Lissandra immediately in the lane on bottom, so um, she can't really do a camp on her own. So that's, I think they predicted the lane swap. They predicted that Rumble can do a camp level one, Lissandra can't, so they just send her down a lane. They have, I think, the favorable 2v2 lane, especially once the limited gets that stun. They get the level two first, and you can see they will walk up in, syn in synchronization, and then they can definitely win that trade. And Fnatic's already backed off, so I think I was right, and I think Copenhagen Wolves predicted the lane swap, and they're coming out on top right now. So strong early game decision making from the Wolves. Crepo definitely impressed by some of the fall thinking, despite it being a tad awkward. Freeze got a small advantage. Hey man, I don't play pro anymore. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm just grasping at straws here. Please, something, prove me right. <laughs> well, we'll see. Rainova, is he going to go down? No. Smites to get the health up. He's died to Craig's in the past. Oh boy. He's going to keep himself close, but he'll survive. Thank you for observers for showing us that one. We kind of uh, showed him pulling the dying, the death to camp last hey, week. Hey man, it happens to everyone. It happens to everybody. Airwax got control of those first crabs. And Fnatic settling into what is going to be a slightly long lane phase. Rumble definitely wants to get his equalizer. Febivin on that Orianna. Going to look for some levels and some items. Orianna also needs some scaling, needs some time before those shockwaves really hurt. Yeah, and Cassiopeia pushing her in, basically saying, okay, they're locked up on top. Reno have to get sustained down. Huni's going aggressive with Youngbuck. Oh, take a look at the damage. Huni overheats, forces Youngbuck to burn through all of his sustain. And again, it's Huni's Rumble. This is, you know, this is the tools that he's he's got available, and he gets himself an early lead in this lane. Yeah, this will be interesting. Raynor is almost guaranteed to go show up in this bot lane to definitely uh, try and snowball that matchup. Targeting the weak link on, on Copenhagen Wolves, definitely Young Buck. So I think that's a smart approach. They definitely punished the early uh, jungling from Rengar. He got really low. At, he didn't get a leash at all, as, if I recall correctly. So that he could really safely push up in mid lane and put some pressure uh, on the side from Soren. That in turn allows Erex to move in, but he found Rainover. Well, let's see who's going to win this trade. Rainover takes damage. He's knocked up in the air. Erex continues to fight. Rainover forced to flash over the wall. And early trading power of the Jarvan comes out ahead. I like it. They're pushing mid. This allows their jungle to play aggressive. And if you put pressure on Rainover, then everything crumbles for Fnatic because they have rather weak lanes, except for Huni actually just being the stronger laner uh, against Youngbuck. I don't, I don't exactly know how that matchup goes, so I don't know if Youngbuck's misplaying it. Huni's a god. Maybe I'm just wrong. But uh, Copenhagen Wolves, impressive early game so far. Well, Krepper, you don't need to doubt yourself. Trust your gut. I believe in you. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, the aggressive play from Awax, as you mentioned, in picks and bands, it's something Awax has Dan, he did it against Sven Skeren, arguably one of the most aggressive junglers, if not the most aggressive, in the European LCS. And Rainova with some early, early pressure. We've also seen him go for early ganks, the flash bowler, once he's got that root charged up. So that's going to delay any sort of presence that Rainova can put oh, down. Oh, this is so smart. So they basically go into the enemy jungle, then they dodge that ward by going through the enemy jungle, over the bush. They're waiting about six more seconds. He's going to come out, and this is almost guaranteed. Huni burning his flash. Look at the CC as well on Youngbuck. Huni's playing so far up. This might actually be first blood or a flash blown on Huni. Well, let's see how Awax plays the lane out. He's bided his time. Here we got go. the flag and drag available. Huni, is he going to get caught? Youngbuck looking for the CC. The glacial path is out. The knockout lands. Youngbuck's moving in. He's rooted Huni in place. Huni's overheating, but he's got the shield up. Five, he turns some damage down in reply. Does force the flash. And Awax got two flashes down from Fnatic in the early game. Yeah, I think this is really smart play again. You know, they're, they're taking small advantages, translating where they need to. They need to stop Huni from snowballing. They already put Rain over behind a little bit. He's not really able to gank, and they have control over the bot lane. Top lane's fine. Mid lane is fine. They're not going to get ganked. So Rain over has to show bottom. I think they want to push out this lane and give Huni a safe base here. So smart play then from the Wolves. We need to see how it works around. Rainov is keeping himself in. This is a counter gank. Airwax is away. Airwax has got out now. We do see Youngbuck slowed. And that glacial path is going to get him to safety. A lot of attention on these top laners who are currently in the bottom lane. Yeah, I really want to stress how smart it is to, to, to get that top lane 2v2. That They're shut down. They're locked up. Mid pushing allows your jungle to move in. So the, the pushing mid lane is the first one to back the jungle up if they go into the 1v1. But they're staying around here. Youngbuck might actually be a little bit in trouble because Rumble has a lot of damage, but they're not committing to it. Yeah, Huni yesterday... Huni yesterday realized 
what a botched tower dive can do to games. And he I think he knew that already. Nova. I think he knew that already. But um, definitely a smart choice there. You don't want to dive level six, Lissandro. That's that's a little bit too much. Does Huni want to pick a fight? Equalizer's available. He's in the danger zone. Got the damage. We do see rain over coming. This is going to be a lot of trouble. Huni's overheating. Ooh. There's no ultimate available. Flash out from Young Buck. Huni's overheat prevented the equalizer, but reply for flash. And uh, a lot of presence from the junglers in those solo lanes. Yeah, interesting direction to send your uh, Lissandra E in there. She just face plants into the wall and is like, yeah, I'm just going to flash out, boys. Uh, I'm out. So that's the flash advantage nullified. But in the, in the end, look at the gold count. 9.8k, 9.9k right now. So 600 gold difference for Copenhagen Wolves. And they're definitely keeping um, Fnatic down. I, I, and we don't really see what Fnatic usually does in this case. Okay, stale early game. Let's let's uh, let Corky farm and send Bora roaming, but Janna isn't really like a pick roam support. So again, champs like working in their favor, uh, but it is after all Fnatic, and all we need is one good rain over gank and this start is just no more. Well, we'll see if rain over can find that gank. You touched on the gold difference. You see Febivent down around 10 CS in the middle lane, around 30 CS the difference between Freeze and Steelback. That duo of Graves plus Annie has kept Steelback and Yellowstar so defensive they have missed multiple waves. And it's resulted in a 600 gold difference already and in this, this early stage. This is where we, we, we sometimes call Steel like a little overrated because I don't think his laning is that strong, you know. Just from playing him a couple of times, watching his games, he drops some CS where he doesn't, he doesn't trade all super well. Of, of course, they don't have the favorable matchup, but I, I don't think this, the, the CS differential should be 35 CS almost, uh, especially not in a matchup like this, uncontested in the top lane. Now, for Copenhagen Wolves, the pressure really comes in keeping up this good early game. What we've seen from other teams who are at the bottom of the table, they have had moments of brilliance. They have held off the top of the table teams for a period of time before the skill disparity eventually evens it out. So let's see how Fnatic find their opportunity. This is what we're waiting for pretty much. And Rainover made it to level six. Rengar is not a good early ganker, you know. It's a nice bonus if he gets a kill here and there. He only burned the flash even though the flash was down. And here he goes, immediate ulti. He's gonna get the ball on top of himself and they might kill him. Well, <laughs> insta flash. Every spec flash. Insta flash from Soren. Shockwave not even needed. Did he but again, the creep? Another, uh, another successful gank. Huni's chilling in the mid lane as well, looking to set a play up. But Soren very, very wisely, afraid of the shockwave, afraid of the roots. Huni's going to return back to the bottom lane. Yeah, Reyno actually bought the creep, but they, they're finding Huni here. Well, let's see what Huni can do. He's caught down. That's a lot of damage. Despite getting Equalizer out, he's going to get taken out. Fairly easy duo. And this is what I was talking about, you know, double CC lockdown. It makes it really easy for you to play the game. And you know, if you play against a better team, make it simple. Burn his flash once and then come back to punish him again. Burning the flash isn't worth it if you don't capitalize on it. And definitely really good that Soren managed to survive that Rengar gank as well. Uh, they do put a lot of respect on Rainover. I went back and watched the clip. He basically bowled out the creep, so Soren could have just walked out. But with a Rengar as good as uh, Rainover, you, do, you don't have the time to see whether Bola connect, connects. But because if you see it, you're probably already dead, so definitely respect Flash from Soren in the middle in there. Kept him alive. So first blood on the board for the Copenhagen Wolves. It does, in fact, land onto Huni after all of those repeated ganks. Again, early game, definitely going in favor of Copenhagen Wolves. And you know what? Against Fnatic, where you know their picks and bans, you know their play style, it's surprising it's taken four full weeks of games for teams to actually start to play around it. But again, the pressure's on Copenhagen Wolves to... to keep the vision up to avoid those rain over Rengar ganks because that's what gets Fnatic back in the game. Well, I think we just saw an, an extra crack in the wall every game as the weeks went on, you know. We saw a little bit of here. We saw once Janna was forced on Yellow Star, there was a lack of early plays coming out of Fnatic, but then they're just superior teamwork later in the game, good disengage and punish of mistakes. Definitely worked into their favor. Uh, but we see Airwax again. He's spending more time in rain over jungle than his own almost, and I really think it's a smart choice. And then when he, whenever he falls back, he takes the Scuttle Crab. That's even more vision. And Copenhagen will see him in control. Uh, take a glance over at the top lane. Basically a fake base here. Unlimited Tibbers can do a lot of damage and immediately win that trade for them. But he's getting poked out. Yeah, massive amount of damage from Steel back in Yellow Star. Howling Gale and that Rocket Barrage. Copenhagen will still with a gold lead. But very smart play from them, as you've highlighted. No engage from Yellow Star, but Unlimited. They're overreaching. He's looking. Think. That's the Tibbers down. They're pushing onto Yellow Star. Or he not. is just destroyed. The healing from Monsoon means nothing when you're ignited. And that is a dead support. Right, oh, it's not over yet. They want Rainover. Rainover's caught out. He is caught in the Cataclysm. He's stealthed up. No more vision. 
We do see Soren throwing now that petrifying glaze. Raylov has jumped back in. Shockwave is up. Two courts. That was a re-engage they did not want. Equalizer from the back line as Hooney's trying to set something up. Take a look at Febivin. He's low on mana. Airwax gets the knocker. Febivin looking for the kill. They're going to trade. This is a one for two so far. Soren is going to be able to stay alive for the time being as Hooney is overheating. The shield is up. Copenhagen Wolves with a three for one in the jungle. All right, let's take it back all the way. Yes, I was wrong. They weren't overreaching. What I was going to say, it's really hard to freeze a wave into Koki Janna poke. But if you can catch Janna outside of her exhaust range, that was really well played. No freeze or unlimited got any of their spells exhausted, basically nullifying that summoner on Janna. He got blown up. And then look at this. They have pink board in the jungle as well, and they find rain over. Wow, just dis destroying him. The positioning from Huni, is he reacting too late? He's bit, but look, that pink would almost spot Reynov. Reynov would have died, but this I do not understand. This is greedy. You shouldn't turn back around. Poison kills him. Orian Alti doesn't do enough damage. Yes, the Rumble's coming, but there's no lockdown to keep them on that ultimate. And Youngbuck's there too. Yeah, Febivin, no mana, unfortunately. Not going to be able to get any more of those spells down. And again, Huni just overheating, not getting the spells out. And this is another flash burn for Huni. That means the next ulti rotation, Cataclysm keeps him locked up, you know. Uh, Frozen Tomb from Usana keeps him locked up yet again, so they can punish this in the future as well. Huni already invested his escape for the next fight in this fight, and he lost out of it. So this could be a really ugly snowball for uh, Copenhagen Wolves right now. Well, let's see if they can make it work. They've got themselves a three and a half thousand gold lead. All of the tools are available to them. Rod of Ages completed for Soren. Tier stacking. Infinity Edge picked up for Freeze. In comparison to nothing for Steel back yet. But Rainover is sniffing some catnip in the top lane. We'll see if he can get himself a taste of Youngbuck. Teleport comes up from Hooney as well. Youngbuck, Glacial Pass away. This is a four-man dive. Equalizes out. Youngbuck is buying so much time. He's needing so much resources. We He's still in. not dead. Now he gets taken out. What do Copenhagen Wolves do in response? Cross-map objective. Every time you see a lot of people in one side of the map, you need to get a cross-map objective. That means zone him off the mid tower, get that tower, and possibly dive. At the bottom, Freeze is getting a, uh, a tower as well. I think Youngbuck wasted his flash. I think he should have just ulted. That would have been enough time to get these two towers. I don't blame him for trying. Having four people in your top lane when you have a flash ulti to Sandra is kind of counter logic, you know, and you see why it is counter logic because Steelbeck's barely getting this tower here and they've lost two towers and almost losing a third one, if not guaranteed losing a third tower for Copenhagen Wolves here. There is no wave clear on the side of Fnatic and that's going to be three towers to one. The gold difference growing to 5,000 and Copenhagen Wolves setting up for a dragon. And this is where Fnatic is going to suffer from the complexity of their composition. How do you get back? You almost need Raynover to engage with the Orianna ball on him. Take a pick that doesn't instantly get CC down, locked down, somehow get two kills, get an objective out of it with the Rumble ulti. Whereas Youngbot, he can just point and click, you know, W that gets him, you know, ulti that gets him as well. And Raynover is forced to use his ulti defensively, and he is the first domino stone in Fnatic's composition. If you remove that stone, the snowball's not going to get rolling, and they just... They're stuck playing an elements type of game right now, you know? Yeah, yeah poke them out, you know, maybe they overreach, but we'll, we'll take a step backward. You take a step forward, we'll take another step backward. And eventually you're going to lose towers, you're going to lose objectives. And Copenhagen Wolves, they have to hold on this game right now. Well, we'll see if they can maintain control. It's, it's difficult to see how Fnatic are going to pull themselves back in without a monumentally magic team fight. Copenhagen Wolves, 15 minutes are going to take that first dragon. Take a look at the itemization. Young Buck sitting on around a thousand gold, still looking to complete his first item, but taking damage from Huni. I like the, the Negatron Cloak on him. It's really smart into double AP. Basically, he wants to go in, CC. He doesn't need the damage, you know. Look at Cassiopeia, Graves, Annie, Jarman. That's enough damage. Young Buck basically becomes like a secondary CC tank, you know. He wants to get a, a Morellonomicon later to hit that 35 slash 40% CDR cap. Basically, becomes a CC bot, and it's so annoying to kill a Lissandra when she gets a little ahead. Yeah, this is actually something Deficio touched on yesterday. If you fall behind as a Lissandra, the traditional build is that Fiendish Codex and some MR, some survivability. Youngbuck ne didn't necessarily fall behind, but his game is working out. His team is really reading Fnatic well and playing around Fnatic's weaknesses exquisitely. All right, now Fnatic's doing a double freeze, though. So they're freezing on the top lane, they're freezing on the bot lane. This is basically Fnatic in damage control. Uh, if not a freeze, it'll be a slow push. But this allows Copenhagen Wolves to ward up the entire map uncontested because they're constantly seeing uh, multiple people uh, on the map. So top laner's locked down, 80 carries in vision. This leaves only Oriana, Rang, or Janna. They're not going to do anything to you if you're grouped. So again, Scope and is doing the right thing. You know, okay, you guys are freezing. I'll take your vision. And then once you're done freezing, we might be at Baron that's going to spawn in about three and a half minutes from now. And you'll be face-checking literally every bush into a full CC comp. Well, good luck with that. So, 
Copenhagen Wolves playing League of Legends by the numbers. Look at the vision control they've got at this top half of the map. They can rotate mid right now. This is this is the beauty of vision, you know. You ward up the red jungle, that means you ward up the transition path. If you ward up the transition path, you can move between the lanes, and Fnatic will be late at every tier 2 tower. Yeah, well, you sound extremely excited I by this. I love League of Legends. And Copenhagen Wolves surprising, I think, many. I did not expect this level of really control around the map. They simply haven't demonstrated in many of their previous Here's the games. Ring they just need to carry back and place a pink ward and then they're fine. Well, let's see if they can. Rainover manages to jump on Unlimited. He's the first one to get taken out as the Shockwave does get thrown down from Fivin. It's a one-for-one one trade as Yellowstar's trying to survive the poison damage. He does manage to hold on for just a moment. It's a support for a jungler and Copenhagen Wolves are in retreat. So, impressive by Fnatic. This should have not worked out this well and Sloppy misplay by Copenhagen Wolves. When you face a composition like this that has a Rengar, which is the main initiator, bring a pink ward, place it down, pop him, you know. Lissandra, the way she works right now, her ultimate stops Rengar in the leap as well. You know, Annie should have been popping the stun on Rainover way earlier. Look, and they bunch up for the Oriana ulti and Freeze is forced to walk back all the way. And then they get the equalizer on the follow-up and it gets really close for both teams. But Fnatic should not be allowed to call back into the game like this. Definitely bring a pink ward against Rengar and you will absolutely win that siege. Well, we'll see if Copenhagen Wolves learn from this one. You can see Yellow Star channeling that Marsoon staying alive. The fact that using AOX went low obviously prevented any further engage, but a one for one, despite the fact that Fnatic are still so far down. And it's an even trade, but it's really good for Fnatic because this basically means a, a reset. Everybody resets and basically meets in the neutral points, which is the river. That means you can reclaim vision control of your own jungle, which in, in essence is a loss for Copenhagen Wolves, you know. Yeah, they went one for one, but they're losing all their deep vision. And they need to layer that, you know, you need to push the lanes, then get deep vision, then push them again, then start rotating. So it's like a multi-step process, and they're back at step one. So let's see if they can do it clean again, finish those tier two towers, and then start rolling back into the Baron area to start baiting the Baron. And that's that's where the, it gets really tricky, you know. Good thing Rengar has a global scout, but if they don't, they have to walk into Lissandra, Jarvan, Cassiopeia, and Annie. Any of them can lock you down and just instantly pop you. Well, we'll see if one of those scenarios sets up. There is a pink ward in this bush, Fnatic. Trying to pull some resources up, but they're not going to be able to defend. We'll have to replace. And this is traditionally where we've seen these teams that struggle try to start to fall apart. So, oh, take going again. Unlimited's caught down. He's melted down. First victim, as we see, equalizer thrown out from Huni. Soren on the retreat. And Fnatic punishing Wolves and Unlimited. So, again, I'm telling you, this is a multi step process. And I was about to compliment Copenhagen Wolves on doing the smart thing. Don't put all your eggs in the middle lane basket, you know. Have Youngbuck push out that bot lane, and then you can start rotating with pressure again. But for the love of God, don't overextend and get caught, because then you're back at square one. Youngbuck's forced to go mid. The ultimates are down, though, but they're having a hard time getting this tower, possibly. Well, Youngbuck decides not to engage. The Shockwave pulls Airwax back in. Rainover was rooted in place. Tower still stands as Airwax is down. Rainover's looking for the root. Youngbuck gets slowed. Still got the Frozen Tomb available. Fnatic with another kill on the board. They are digging deep and defending that tower. Opening a wolves. Relax. You know, you don't have to get that tower immediately. Place a pink ward, sit around it, keep that mid lane shoved in. Let somebody push up a side wave, and then you can start rotating. Bring those pink wards. You need to spot that Rengar. And this is an absolutely insane read by Fnatic. They see something on the bottom, like, yeah, okay, these guys are not ready for a panic engage on their main engage. They take out the Annie. And then Copenhagen Wolves overreaches and get punished by Oyana. Well, let's see what Steelback can do. He Valks, Soren is chasing. Force the He's going to throw the uh, poison out. And again, Steelback, 0-0-2. Got that Triforce completed, but he's down 45 CS to his opposite number. Yeah, but at this point, it doesn't matter what happened in the past. You know, it's only what you're doing right now. And Fnatic's falling out better than they should have. You know, this game should have been closed out already. And look at the bot lane. That's stacked. So Copenhagen Wolves only has two waves to play with anymore. And the longer you go, the more wave clear comes on Oriana, the more wave clear on Huni and the more you will start to need to look at Baron instead of endlessly sieging. Well, Rainover has found Unlimited before. He's found him again. Unlimited takes some damage. Red buff is helping out, putting some damage down into Freeze. He's actually going to secure that one. What do Fnatic do now? See, look look three minutes ago. Copenhagen Wolves would have pushed Fnatic all the way out of the jungle. Now they're getting contested on like the first line of brushes, pretty much. Soon, if Fnatic keeps calling back into the game, they will get contested on their second line of brushes, and then they can't really bait the Baron even more. So Fnatic is doing an incredibly good job at staying alive in this game, and Copenhagen Wolves is suffering because they all every time they're forced back to step one of the siege rotation game, you know, and they really need to start making one work because eventually Bora shot column is going to come out on top. Well, Copenhagen Wolves, they showed that they can climb the ladder. They showed that they have the ability to scale up, to push up, to play the map. But that 5,000 gold lead has now dwindled to around 3,000. 
Fnatic unable to secure the dragon. That's number two. This might be a big engagement on either side. Let's see where Rainover goes. Pink Ward's still not going down. They do manage to find one. Rainover is destroyed by the burst of Freeze. That is replied by Ewax. Jungler for jungle. The shockwave pulls Freeze in. Freeze is now out of the fight. What can Youngbuck do? Forced to self-cast the Frozen Tomb. But the AoE is going to be enough to take down Yellowstar. Soren continues to fight. He's found Steelback. He's looking for Hoodie. He's found him. Now he's on to Fervivin. The Twin Fangs. It's a Triple Fang. That is Soren going huge. I'm just gonna let that moment last for a while. That was absolutely beautiful. It should not happen. Youngbok had his ulti way too long. Just look at Youngbok and look at how long it takes him for him to cast the ulti. Again, they're initiating on the engage, but I think Rainover overreached a little bit. And I would kite back here if I was opening world. We just expended so many spells. Cassiopeia ulti doesn't really connect, you know, Soren's low. Youngbok using his ulti. Yellowstar, unfortunate. When you walk back on the Lissandra ultimate, you take the damage. Yellowstar shouldn't have died there. That would have prevented the triple kill. So I think. Copenhagen Wolves got lucky here that they had an insane skill play, but here they're fighting again. Oh, Huni's in trouble, but Freeze is going to get taken out. It's Rainover that gets the kill credit. Teleport from Youngback. He's looking for a target. We'll follow Airwax. He's chasing Rainover. Rainover's knocked in the air. Jan has got the shield down as Huni's dropped in the background. That knockup's not going to be enough. Actually, it is Rainover. Very aggressively well, jumps back in. Korean. Had the support of Steelback, but it was Youngback that took out Huni in reply for losing Freeze. So basically, a Copenhagen Wolves is playing around with a shotgun, you know. They, they have a lot of damage that blasts in a lot of directions, but they run out of shells in that fight. And then you gotta back off, you know. You take one kill, take it, take Rain over down, and then back off. But we're already talking about the next fight. This game is going absolutely crazy. I can't even keep up. Yeah, this is obviously just the replay of yeah, that yeah. previous engage. Huni, gonna get chased on. I love the shotgun analogy. We we'll see if Copenhagen Wolves can find time to reload. Well, they have an Uzi in between in Cassiopeia, but that's that's the one Uzi in an army of shotguns. <laughs> so definitely, if you blow one guy up and you, you basically use all your spells on him, back out, you know, wait for them. It's fine. There is no pressure because you already screwed up your mid game. Time to take it slow again. You don't have that advantage anymore that you had. And you see what we talked about. Rainover is, it's incredible how f he, he can come back into this game after being destroyed in the early game. Every single of his ultis managed to work. Yeah, and you can't just deny the fact that he's got that CS advantage. One thing you do want to highlight, 0-3-10 on Airwax's job and definitely an instigating force for the Wolves. 5-1-3 on Sora's Cassio. We said how impactful it is. Soren undefeated in two games. He's looking to make it a third, but they can't afford more mistakes. I'm worried though, because the longer you go, Janna's shield gets stronger. Janna ulti heals more. And his damage is going to stay pretty much the same. You know, Rumble shield, that's going to get stronger. Oriana shield going to get stronger. They're staying in this game. And yeah, eventually, Copenhagen Wolves' shotguns are just not going to be strong enough, and then Fnatic will just win this game. So, Krepa, you feel the scaling on the side of Fnatic, despite the 5k gold. Jailbear just smite through AoE the minions down for Wave Clear. Pretty smart by Rainover. He doesn't need to smite for any objectives right now. So, yeah, they're basically saying, no, you, get, you guys can't get our towers. If you want to play, uh, you got to play the vision game, you got to bait us to Baron, but we at least have one blue trinket on Corki. And then if you get that down, we have the global check from Rengar. So, if you get that down, then we'll start face checking. So it's incredibly hard for Copenhagen Wolves to close this out. They don't have the security blanket of a Kalista to you say, okay, we'll start smiting at 2k instead of 500. So Copenhagen Wolves, they're, they're slowly running out of options here. And Fnatic with an impressive hold on this game. And look at all of the wards on that top half of the map. Yes, there are two side stones on the side of the Copenhagen Wolves, but their vision has been really quite fantastic. Yeah, but there's and no oracles though. It doesn't matter if you have all these dots of vision, if you let the enemy just place one or two wards in between, because then you're not controlling dark areas, and that's the power of vision. You want to force people into lose-lose situations. Either we get the objective, or either you can face check look for us. But if you give them the wards, they're essentially useless, because once you start sieging, you're running into too much wave clear. Look at this, Fnatic's already controlling the Baron area, and Copenhagen Wolves is doing this thing where they pile up as a group, and they, they can't split anymore, and this allows Fnatic to basically just jump around them, put a little water at the left side, put a little water at the right side, stall for long enough, and eventually Copenhagen Wolves gets caught by Rengar or overreaches on an engage. Well, let's see if Rainover can find another target. Steelback backing off in the top lane. We do see some big items completed. Ghostblade for Freeze, BF Sword picked up for Steelback. Chalice secured for Yellowstar as well. And that's a good point, Quick Shot. That's the makings of a Mikael's Crucible, and that's going to be absolutely crucial in this matchup. You know, get get rid of Lissandra Ultimate, get rid of any stun, and suddenly the fight becomes a lot harder because no longer are those targets locked down. They have a plethora of options to disengage. They have these shields. They have the Janna ulti. They stay alive longer than you would reckon, and you're going to run out of damage. So unless Soren can get a lot of those twin fangs or triple fangs, as you call them earlier, <laughs> they're, they're going to have a hard time. The gold differential. It's still 4K, but it's been 4K for a long, long time. Yeah, that's definitely the case, which gives 
of course, shrinks in effectiveness as the game goes on. QSS picked up after finishing the next item for Steelback. So not only is that Mikhail's closer for Yellow Star, Steelback's going to have the ability to self-cleanse one of those abilities. Rain over, clearing out the crab 35 seconds before Dragon is up. Fnatic have not had a touch on Dragon, despite having a very strong sort of, you know, AoE and Rumble in Oriana, but that is, of course, because they fell yeah, they had to so far it. behind so early on. But there are only two Dragons down in 27-minute games, so that's fine. You, know, you only want to look at five Dragons, and that's still 18 minutes or maybe a little less, say 14 minutes possibly away, so they definitely have the time to play around with that, because then, it, then it's hitting really the late game, and we saw how good Fnatic is right now, and you see Again, there's no splitting, you know. Okay, Copenhagen Wolves pushed up a, a slow push on top. They have a wave on bottom. Rainer was taking care of that. They should really drive in the mid lane right now and then use those double waves. They engage on Feverfin. Well, let's see if they take him out. He's down, frozen tomb. Unlimited flash over the wall into the Tibbers. And Copenhagen Wolves just setting their sights on Baron. This is an incredibly smart engage because they have the top lane pushing. Somebody had to go there. Bot lane was pushing. And they, they, they can secure the Baron. But remember, Rainover can still jump in and smite steal. So. Ballsy play into Equalizer with Rumble. Let's see if this works out. So, Copenhagen Wolves, five members in the pit versus four members of Fnatic. Everybody is around. The Equalizer goes out. It's not bad. Rainover jumps forward, oh, waiting for the though. Shockwave. He's out. We do see Fnatic on the retreat. Airwax has been taken down. It's two kills in favor of Fnatic as Steelback is on the board. Baron is stopped for the trade of Rainover. And looking at the aftermath, ignoring the fight, you cannot come out of a fight two men down with a one-man engage. If you still have Flash and Oki up on Cassiopeia, that should never, ever happen. There's the engage playing out. That's a great cataclysm from Airwax. It is, if Youngbug's helping with the backline, but if both of them are doing the exact same thing at the exact same time, they're re rendering one of them obsolete, and that's why you see a two-for-one. You know, Youngbug put in, Airwax went in, they're like, okay, guys, fix the problem in the back, I'll deal with the front, but they went two-for-one on a Baron bait. That should never, ever happen. They do pick up the Dragon here, but I think Fnatic can uh, cut their blessings. They got lucky there. Small misplays from the Copenhagen Wolves. And it's been small misplays the longer this game has gone. Oh, yeah, it's, definitely. It's very clear that the Wolves had a strong decision and strategy in the early game. Their, their lane plan, their swap, their invades. They've kept Fnatic down, but it feels like they haven't been able to master the later stages of the it game. Seems like they got handed a textbook to how to take down Fnatic uh, 101 with 100 pages, but it was only filled in until page 40. <laughs> and then it kind of starts looking, guys, we got blank pages here. What do we do? Okay, we watched LCS. Okay, we saw some rotations. We saw some plays, <laughs> but I don't know you know how this works. And then suddenly Rainover comes out of the invisibility. He's like, hey guys, you forgot your pink words. Yeah, that's why the pages were blank, because Rainover was on a thrilling hunt. We did see a Warmog's picked up for Unlimited, which you haven't called out just yet. Very tanky frontline, mostly Horrible likely tanky. because Rainover has jumped on him a thousand times. As a support main, is that your first sort of rushed item? To be fair, <laughs> I don't play much Hanny. Um, <laughs> but no, no, I would not play Warmox Hanny. Uh, I think if you really want to do that, what I like is Rainover, he's being selfish, so he built the, the Spectre's Cow and then um, the Warmox on himself, so he doesn't have a locket for his team. He waits for Boar to get that later. Airwax is forced to play locket, you know. If, Against a double AP, let your Jarvan get really tanky. Let him build Banshee's Veil, or Veil rather, uh, himself. <laughs> Not a Banshee's baby cow. But, uh, <laughs> but then, and then let your support build Aegis. I'd love to build Aegis on Annie. It gives me everything I need, unless I'm going straight AP. So definitely, I, I think Copenhagen Wolves forgot to plan for the late game, and they were just like, let's invest in this early game. And they're, they're definitely um, losing some stocks here. Well, 13 minutes has gone by. Four and a half thousand gold separates these two players. We do teams rather. Huni is now caught out. Unlimited's chasing him. Freeze doesn't even need the help. He just insta gibbed Huni. Huni's got no real arm outside that sequence. See, I'd like them to see the pick up that bot wave. You know, you're so close, Freeze. Just walk over, buckshot it. And that's a slow push going for you again if you have troubles in the future. Don't leave those side lanes even because at the top side, Steelback just pushes a side wave. And now you're dealing with one wave into an Ariana. And you better make that dive work because your side lanes, they're not pushing with you. That means in five, four or two minutes from now, you don't have any Baron pressure unless you run there right now. But then you got to play it perfect. You know, you got to use your CC well, spread it out, and definitely don't make the same mistake again. Well, teleport is available for Huni. He's spawning in seven seconds. Yellow Star's moving forward. He could be the first victim. Gets the knockup. Glacial Path comes out. Insta Monsoon. Yellow Star's on the retreat. He's going to flash over the wall. He does make it out. Now Airwax looking for a target. He can't Cataclysm steal back. The Bola Strike goes wide for Rainover. Tibbers hits no one. Unlimited forced to flash over the wall. Rainover's on the board as we do see Unlimited in the retreat. Fnatic find the kill. That should never happen. Monsoon should never proc Alessandra away without using the W or the R. Like, Yellowstar played that frame perfect. You know, there's 
half a second later, he's dead. Half a second earlier, he's dead. And he managed to take the exact path out, flash out. And then the beauty of that play, Rainover counter engages. Oh, Rainover knew Soren was there. Steps backwards. Soren's on the retreat. The Snake Lady's trying to get away. Here comes a zippy young buck. Finds himself a wall. Glacial pass away. He's going to get that frozen tomb onto Feathervin. Here comes the support. Freeze blows up one. That's a double hourglass as Feathers and, and young buck trade one for one. In the background, Soren's found Yellow Star and Steel Back goes man mode. He dives in. We see if Hooney picking up a kill as Soren is putting the poison down into Steel Back. Hooney looking for Freeze, forced to flash away. Hooney's already died to that Graves before. The poison's ticking. Shield keeps Hooney alive. And another sloppy engage. 18 to 15 in 32 minutes. These teams are happy to fight. Yeah, if the Wolves clean up the janitor there, there, they could have had a Baron, but they have to back off right now. Uh, pretty much a reset again, but I just want to highlight how, how smart Rainover is. I'll do that after uh, the possible catch here, Kuchar. Let's see what happens. Vision is out, the poison goes through. Steelback makes it out. Who needs going to be the sacrificial lamb? He volunteers his tribute, and then Really, right now, they have to push in the lanes. Look at it, mid lane, bot lane's pushing out. But look at Soren, he gets absolutely outplayed by Rainover. One, two, step, and he's like, nope, you're not helping me. And then he survives and forces the flash with the Boa. Before this fight, I want to take it all the way back, you know. Bora, the, the, he escaped right there, you know, and basically forced the counter engage from Rainover. But if you look at your play and play, they're doing Baron. Well, let's see what Rainover can do. He's hopped in, Baron secured by the Copenhagen Wolves. Rainover tried to get in, but it wasn't enough. So after all of the aftermath, Wolves are the one that grab Baron, and once again, Fnatic are playing completely defensive. And definitely on Soren's back there, he's playing incredible this game. He does so much damage. He basically forced two people out there, scouted the right bush with the poison, basically forced Huni to sacrifice himself, and then this time they didn't get caught by Rain over. They have the Baron buff, and now this is going to help their siege so much because it's double AP into these buff Baron minions is incredibly hard. Well, equalizer just equalizer. defensively from Huni, but he can't do that if another wave rocks up. I'm going to go all the way back to pick some bands, Crepo. Copenhagen Wolves banned out so many mid lane champions, and you said the exact line Soren looking to outplay Febivin. Oh, he's done it. 7 1 and 6. His Cassio has been the reason the Wolves have stayed relevant the longer this game has gone. Yeah, but so basically, Soren made that investment in pushing the mid lane, but Aerox, he capitalized on that. He used that window of opportunity to go into the jungle and shut down Rain over. Top lane to 2v2. They didn't get out of there. There was no like proactive play from Fnatic. And then they held Youngbuck in the match. And if we see at the stats, or we look at the stats, rather, Youngbuck's given up first blood in quite a lot of games already. And he did in this game. He even burned a flash on Huni. And basically, they stopped everything what Fnatic did well. They had issues translating the advantage, but they're still ahead. 6,000 gold and a Baron right now. In half of the games the Copenhagen Wolves have played, four out of eight, including this one, Youngbuck has given up first blood. I was wondering if he was going to become the reverse Yankos, giving up first blood as opposed to securing it, but not today. Dragon is respawning. This is Dragon number four. Fnatic are nowhere near, and that ticking time bomb is now really counting down. Yeah, yeah, because they have decent late game, and look at it, four, four Dragons, that means the next one's up in six minutes. That's going to be roughly when Baron's going to come up. Fnatic need to get a grasp on vision control basically three to four minutes from now, because you can't start fighting for these objectives when they spawn. That's a mistake a lot of people make in competitive, in solo queue even. You want your vision out there before, so you can challenge the contest of the vision, because if you don't and you have to fight in a dark area, you'll have to re rely on basically Rainover making absolutely sick play again. And eventually, you know, the Wolves are going to figure out that Pink works spot Rengar, and then they'll have a really big issue. So planning ahead, that is the plan for Fnatic. We want to touch on the Limiter's build again. He's got himself a Giant's Belt to go with the Warmogs. Going to be using all of that armor and MR from his Molten Shield to help improve the value of his health. It's non-traditional, but you can't argue it has been kind of working out. I mean, why would you go Warmogs instead of straight magic resistance? I mean, are you that afraid of Corky's all attacks on Annie? Because all the other damage is purely magic. Rumble is coming out. Okay, Rainover is jumping him, of course, but okay, that could explain it technically. But then even then, I'd rather just get, get a Zonyas and survive that all in. I, do, I don't think health stack is, is the best option for uh, for all Nordic here. Better invest in pink wards and stop getting jumped on. Well, that's something. That's the reason I love League of Legends. Is there's always going to be a healthy debate as to what is working, what is not working. We do see Copenhagen Wolves. The wave is being cleared by Fnatic. Febivent plus Steelback doing a great job of just wave clearing, and Copenhagen Wolves continue the siege. No more Baron. But credit where credit's due. Even if his build is debatable, uh, let's leave that in the middle. Unlimited has been doing a lot of great engages here, and he's been basically been the first uh, snowball of the avalanche, you know, the first domino stone going down. They basically, they can pile on the Cataclysm, they can pile on uh, Youngbuck's 
of a power of CC on top of that Tibbers. And then he stays long for long enough uh, around for a second CC rotation, and then his job is done, and it doesn't matter what he builds. So let's see if he can keep that CC down. Fnatic got themselves an hourglass on both Huni and Febivan. That's going to be very important to survive some of the bursts that can come out from Freeze, from Sora, and from Youngbuck. But they haven't been given the opportunity to have these extended team fights that they might be looking for. Going back in time, I would actually like to see, as as trolly as it sounds, a uh, banner of command. You can get Aegis, uh, double Aegis stacks uh, in fights on the users. You get the Banner of Command. Once you get the Baron buff, you can basically make an unkillable cannon minion that we saw Lamination do against this composition. Basically, Copenhagen Wolves is suffering from the problem they can't really split push, you know, because they can't sacrifice one member of their composition to go on a different lane because they're afraid to get jumped on. Why not have a minion do that for you, you know, and, and then put on a side lane push, you know, and then eventually Fnatic will have to peel one guy off, and that facilitate, facilitates the dive, rather. So I think if Copenhagen Wolves looked into the future a little better, that locket could have maybe even been a banner of command uh, on an Annie router, because she actually values from the AP component as well. And then that could have been slightly, definitely a, a better build. Right now, Copenhagen Wolves, they're, they're content with taking the backseat, having medium deep vision, and they're waiting for the, the next objectives, because they couldn't even get an inhib open with the Baron buff. So definitely they're going to try a little harder next time with the next Baron buff and with the fifth Dragon because Sieging right now is basically throwing away the game. So I want to see a lot of wards from Copenhagen Wolves come out. Controlled, aggression, definitely do not get caught. Whatever you do, keep that vision up. Well, Copenhagen Wolves seem to have figured out the side lane. Both top and bottom appear to be pushing in their favor. And they are stacking up on the middle. They've got wards around Baron. Two minutes until that one spawns. Dragon, not too far off. But the wave clip from Fnatic is very strong. It is very solid. Can Copenhagen Wolves play these side lanes as effectively as they've been playing the Vision game? I think they're almost timed perfectly. They need to hold two more waves in middle, and then they can start backing off for, for an objective. Baron's a minute 30 away. Dragon will be a little later, I presume. So definitely hold those waves off. And worst case, if the waves hit earlier on the side lanes, use that to pile on mid and get that turret, you know, break one turret open, because that's almost going to be a free hand. So, Krepo, you've obviously been able to see this from the observer point of view. How much more difficult is it if you're in the Copenhagen Wolves team comms? They have good vision. They can definitely realize the situation. How much more difficult is in Fnatic situation? They see a ticking time bomb. They're planning ahead, but there is no clean-cut call to get out of it. They basically have to punish a mistake from Copenhagen Wolves, or they're at risk of losing a tower. So, we'll see if Fnatic can make the right call. That gold lead has grown. We're about to hit 40 minutes into the game. 35 kills and around 7,000 gold between these two teams. Drum rolls, please. The side lanes are about to hit, so this is where it matters. Um, we see Huni peeling off. The wave skilled in mid, though. This is really good timing. You know, mid lane goes down. They can't backdoor that. They can't rotate top. The waves didn't hit at the exact same time, so maybe they should have sent somebody uh, to facilitate those waves going in because Huni just cleared the entire bottom wave. Fnatic has to repeat this one more time in the middle and top wave, and then you're good to go. In the book of how to defeat Fnatic, Copenhagen Wolves read up to page 14 when he said it was blank. Have they found some pages at the back of the book giving them some information? Because they've managed to get to this top lane. This tower is going down. We see the smite from Rainover, but it's not enough. Equalizer is available, but not used yet. Huni's about to overheat. Let's see what happens. Copenhagen Wolves, they get the top tower after a smart rotation. Yeah, and look at what they're doing right now. They still have that deep red vision in the jungle, or red red jungle vision, rather. And look what's about to spawn in about one second here. Twitch out. Baron's coming up, I believe, and this is really good. They need to push in one more wave mid to do not allow Fnatic. Fnatic realizes this, and they're going for the Rengar ulti. Wow, Rainover's looking for a target. He's going to be able to root somebody down. He's going to be able to hop. It's Airwax that he sets his sights on, has the ability to hop again. Shockwave is available, but not used. Rainover's looking. The well, equalizer the goes out, and that's fantastic. Airwax is down. Rainover flashes out. Let's look for Soren. He's got a petrifying gaze. Freeze flashes forward. He flashes the shockwave really out. Flash. Unlimited jumps in. He's tippets down. Youngbuck's found three. He's rooted them. Frozen Tomb to stay alive is now Huni gets melted in the background. Rainover stays alive thanks to that command protect. Copenhagen Wolves, despite losing one early, they put up a decent fight to reply. I have to call uh, uh, Erox here. If we look at that fight, you know, he made a very crucial mistake. You just used the expended Rengar engage. Do not turn back. You're about to bait Fnatic into a choke point when you have Cassiopeia. If not, you're going to get a free Baron. Do not turn back and force your team to run through that same choke hold against the Rumble. Fnatic's going uh, for uh, Baron right here because they want to punish the Dragon at the Wolf. Store. Well, let's see if they can make it work. Dragon number five was completed by Copenhagen Wolves. They've got double the bonuses. Look at that mini map. You've got Copenhagen Wolves coming up from behind. Soren's got no ulti. Rainover's looking for a target, but he's been left alone. Fnatic did take the Baron. They lost their jungler. And it is one mega buff for another. 
Crepo, exposed inhibitor, Baron on Fnatic, down five, 6,000 gold. But it's good, with it's Baron good though, they can spread out, use those minions on all the waves to hold the push a lot better. If I was Wolves, I would much rather have that Baron than the fifth Dragon buff. Pick that one up later, unless they can expose this inhibitor right now. But I really want to go back. Arax made a crucial mistake. Fnatic prioritized the right objective, and the Wolves, they got ahead, but they could have they could have closed the game right here. Well, could have closed the game, was not to be. Equalizers available for Huni. He's got the spell. Copenhagen Wolves, one or two more hits is what they need. They take the inhibitor. So, super minions in the top lane, Fnatic, with Baron, Huni, again, looking for something. No fight to come just yet. It's a battle They do of love wards. their pink wards. Yep, a ward, ward breaks loose. And you see Youngbuck in the bottom, that's good. He's, he wants to start pushing that wave in. They don't have the Baron, though, so... Yeah, Super Minions in the top lane. The next three minutes, I don't think we'll see anything exposed. And by that time, the, the, the fifth Dragon buff will have expired. So that's basically nullifying all the advantage. In addition, Baron gives you more gold, uh, or just gives you gold rather than Dragonstone. So I think Fnatic definitely got the better end of that because they were forced on that play. That wasn't a play they were, had the chance to make. They had to make that play right there, or they ha were completely in the dark, ready to get turned on. And that was a really, again, crucial timing ulti from the Rengar from Rainover. Crepo, Fnatic. They're six and one in the league. They've only lost the game to Unicorns of Lab, mostly because of misplays on an individual level and a smart pick and ban phase from the Unicorns. Against Copenhagen Wolves, they clearly lost the early game. The laning phase was, was against them. And the draft, one could argue. And you've been a fan of Fnatic's scaling. You said you do think with some time, they've got wave clear, they've got the ability to pick it up. With Super Minions top and Baron, is it late enough in the game for their comp to actually pull back against everything that Wolves have? Or do you think Wolves are just so far ahead? It's it's getting tricky right now because, yeah, their shields are getting stronger, but at this point, you know, Soren's dealing in a godly amount of damage. I'm just going to hover over if I can find him here on my screen to see how much AP he really has. And he has 1,372 AP. You know, you can have a lot of shields, but with Queen Fan spam, that's going to be a lot. Uh, we have to wait for the top lane right now in Wolves. Again, be patient. Always use your side lanes to your advantage because eventually that's going to draw somebody away and might even force another equalizer from Huni. But I realize this, you see them moving up a little more because they they know if we're going to wait, we're going to get choked out. Let's look if we can get a move here. If not, let's be patient. Copenhagen Wolves has thrown their advantage in the past. Let's see how this plays out. Yeah, that's right. Copenhagen Wolves have also, however, won games from teams that have thrown their advantage. It's not the case this time around. There is no advantage to throw. That's it. Shield goes onto the tower here from Yellow Star. Eye of the Storm helping to block some of the damage. Baron buff still ticking away. I'm gonna double check the cooldown of that. They need to set that. somebody mid right now. They need to like drive in that wave. Summon somebody that has damage at the same time as the next wave hits on top. Because they can't break the four-man wave clear. They can't dive it. They've realized that right now. If not, they just need to keep Fnatic here. There's no wards on the map. Look at the entire map. It's completely barren wasteland of no vision. Uh, but Rainover, he's going for the signature ulti yet again. Oh, he's managed to find Soren. Soren's been rooted. The equalizer's great. That's an even better shockwave. Huni's got the first kill of the fight and follows it up with a second. Now we see Steelback. He's janitoring up from the back line, focusing down Freeze. Exhaust comes out. Fnatic find four and only lose Rainover. And it's gone. And the, yeah, the, the entire build-up. You need you need more pink boards. You can't see that tower and or start rotating at least, but you can't get caught like that with your pants down. It's five people. It's just a really beautiful combo. To look at this the equalizer, the, the shockwave. You know, Rainover is still not even close to dying right there. He catches out Sword out of position. There is no follow-up. Look, look where Youngbuck is right now. He's walking out of the fight. And he starts turning around. He's like, okay, I can't fight. And then Steelback goes in because he knows he can't get popped anymore. And if he does, the rest will clean up. Ladies and gentlemen. There are your base gates. To my knowledge, the first time I've seen them effectively used in a defensive sieging position. Rainover found a way in. To be fair, he could have hopped over the wall anyways. Could have, but... Could have, would have, should have, but he got it anyways. Damn it, Rito, please. Those gates are awesome. So, Fnatic get themselves some towers on the board. This is the first tower they've gotten in over 35 minutes. One, two, three of them, in fact. Middle and bottom outer, as well as the inner. That gold is now completely even. And this is the most satisfying feeling as a support. The enemy team throws, you push in all the way, and you have wards left on your side stone. You get the ultra deep vision that you could otherwise never get. And look at those two wards. They're actually a little bit too deep, but it's still fun for Yellow Star. But again, you know, this map was completely dark, and suddenly Fnatic has control again. We're going to start looking at a fight for Baron, because I don't think Wolves are going to make the same mistake of sieging again, but I think they've 
They've lost their momentum, and Fnatic could very well be in Kepa, position to take this game. Kepa, you've said you don't think they're going to make the same mistake about three times now, and the mistakes have been made. Mistakes read. have been made. <laughs> mistakes have been made. Copenhagen Wolves have given up their oh, lead. Here's Rain over. Let's see who we can find. There's Nobody exclamation marks. He's found somebody. Does actually get stunned up. Here. I think that was blind. He's got 3,500 HP. Young Bucks looking for a target. Equalizer is going to split them Kite out back, as Rain over back, hops back in. Copenhagen Wolves trying to kite, but Airwax is going low. Shockwave is available, as is the Petrifying Gaze. Let's see who can get the better AoE. Good fight by the Wolves. Kite back and then use the threat of the Cassia PLT to prevent Fnatic from overreaching. Raynor's ultimate is down. He can't jump in anymore with the Orion out of ball. Wow. And this is five dragons for Copenhagen Wolves. This might force Fnatic into making a mistake. Let's see what they can do. Equalizer is not available. Please keep that in mind. Tibbers is up for Unlimited. Does not have flash. So Copenhagen Wolves, they've started Dragon. Actually, it's Fnatic that seems to be putting the damage. Flying from Aerox and Soren are flash. This might be an absolute brutal combo. That is massive. The Petrifying Gaze destroys Fnatic. Huni goes golden before he goes frozen. Aerox gets knocked up, but Steelwack is in trouble. Steelback's going to get taken down. Freeze picks up a kill. He gets one in reply before Yellow Stars drop. Fnatic are aced. This is game. This Copenhagen game. Wolves are pushing in. Youngback is teleported to the top. Copenhagen Wolves find a fantastic victory against Fnatic. They filled in the pages in the book. They finally learned. If Rainover comes for you, run away. He is really scary. Kite him back. Use the threat of your composition and then counter engage. Arax flank at the same time. Soren R flashes forward and they're taking this game, quick shot. Fnatic are down. Six and two as the Copenhagen Wolves go huge. Beautiful game. Been a long time since we've heard the howl of the wolves on stage. Against and Fnatic of all teams. And Freeze is definitely singing loud and proud. Fnatic are heartbroken. They're not used to losing, you know. They're like suddenly, uh, we're the ones walking over usually, but yeah, this time the wolves claim that game. They finally learned from their mistakes and yeah, impressive. It's even more heartbreaking for Fnatic considering, considering how well they defended, considering how far they drew that game out. Everything the Wolves did, Fnatic had somewhat of an answer in that mid game. This is one of those few games where you can almost argue to nominate a losing team player for MVP in, in, in the case of Rainover. Set behind, uh, out of his control really, his mid lane was pushed in, the, he got punished in his jungle. But then the turnaround, uh, like basically time perfect Rengar ult is almost working until eventually the enemy adapted and learned to deal with it and then Fnatic was out of options. You know, they had very telegraphed plays at the end because they were behind. Yeah. Very, very stern looks on the Fnatic faces. But in the team handle it, discussing the game, discussing how it went. Elation for Dentist <laughs> and Unlimited. Something we've talked about Unlimited uh, fairly often in the last week or two, Crepo, is just how many strong AD carries he's played besides. Freeze goes 8, 2, and 13. Unlimited with an unconventional build. 3, 4, and 10. You cannot deny that his Tibbers were instrumental in keeping Fnatic down. No, I mean, the, the build's debatable, and I guess he, he definitely wanted raw HP and use his Molten Shield. Uh, if he was going to pop 100 to 0, uh, I can definitely see where he's coming from. Maybe liked a little more MR, but you know, who am I to disagree? He played phenomenal, had some really good engages, and he wasn't afraid to go in, you know. That, that's definitely important as an Annie. You can miss some Tibbers, but he went in time and time again, sacrificed uh, for his team and did his job. Really, really great play coming out of the Copenhagen Wolves. Reading Fnatic. I'm going to use Krepo's analogy relatively well. The playbook, how to beat Fnatic. There was a big missing section in the middle. They found it. But they found the ending and they definitely had the beginning. If Copenhagen Wolves can do it, do it, surely other teams in the LCS can do it as well. Yeah, but Fnatic's a smart team, you know, they will adapt as well. You only have to adapt once people figure out your weaknesses. If, you, if the same style stays working, you know, eventually SK might even drop a few games, but they're a very smart team, they will adapt as well. And, and we'll, this, is, this is why the beauty is in a season and not in a few games and in a streak, because everyone's like, oh yeah, look at this team doing nice and fancy. Let's see how Fnatic bounces back from this. Well, the next game they're going to play is going to be in SK Gaming. And That'd be rough. If SK can take anything away from this game, do you think they can also read that same book? Do you think SK as a team can do what Copenhagen Wolves just did? Oh yeah, if SK bot lane lanes 2v2, I think they can definitely win. And then the, the players are even smart at closing out these games. Um, so definitely, if SK gets this lead, SK will not get this lead go. But Fnatic, they will adapt in Champions Select as well. And they might not give away such a big lead yet again. Yeah, I really have